Hi, my name is Anna Silver, and thank you for tuning in to UTP Presents. Today, my guests are Kate Steven and Landon Browning from the Boise State Women's Center. And I just want to thank you both for coming here today. I'm really excited to talk to you. And let's just start out with uh, asking what are your roles at the Women's Center? Absolutely. Uh, like I said, my name is Kate Steven. I'm the program coordinator at the Women's Center. Uh, the gender pronouns I use are they, them, and their. Uh, Lana and I can talk more about gender pronouns later. Um, so I'm the program coordinator, and that means that I get to supervise students like Landon uh, in programming efforts around gender equity, feminism, masculinity, body image, uh, healthy relationships, and a whole other uh, gamut of uh, topics. Um, LGBT experience is another one we cover. Great, and what about you, Landon? So, uh, I prefer the pronouns he, him, his. Uh, I work as a peer educator, so I put on programming. Um, I do events, I facilitate events, and I work um, on putting on workshops for students and faculty around the university. Awesome, and Kate, could you just mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about your background and mm -hmm. how you came to the Women's Center here <laughs> at Boise State? Absolutely, so um, I graduated from Ohio University in 2011 with my Bachelor's of Holistic Health Science and then stayed on for two years for grad school for college student personnel, mm -hmm. um, which basically means that uh, my profession is student affairs and I work with college students and um, I worked in academic advising a little bit at Ohio University. I taught freshman seminar courses that are pretty similar to um, at Boise State, the UF 100 courses. Mm, okay. Um, but I also had a huge interest in social justice issues, specifically LGBTQ experiences um, and issues relating to gender equity. So I did a nationwide job search and here I ended up in Boise. It was the right fit and I've been here a year and a half now working with students like Landon and it's been a great ride so far. Great. And you like Boise so far? I do like Boise. Awesome. <laughs> and how about you, Landon? Yeah, so I first started getting involved in social justice work when I got involved with campus organizations such as the Pride Alliance. and. Um, that sort of evolved my interest, and then um, I found out about the Women's Center Peer Educator position, and so I was super interested um, in that. And so my emphasis actually at the Women's Center as a peer educator is LGBTQIA topics and masculinity. So Awesome. And would one of you elaborate on like the history of the Women's Center here at Boise State, how it got started, mm -hmm. uh, what kind of steps you went through to get it started here? Well, we did not get it started. The Women's <laughs> Center, um, the first like official women's center at Boise State was founded in 92. Okay. Um, so quite some time ago, I was pretty young then. <laughs> um, and why women's centers uh, started popping up on college campuses is because women didn't always have the representation that they do on college campuses, both as students um, and as well as faculty and staff members. Mm -hmm. So women's centers were created um, out of support for female students, and over the last several decades, they've evolved into um, covering all sorts of different gender issues. So we do talk about masculinity and what the pressures are for young men growing mm -hmm. up, as well as the pressures that young women or other, all genders really face growing up. So that's how women's centers have kind of evolved, and now we at the Boise State Women's Center talk about all sorts of issues relating to gender in any sort of way. Okay, and so what is your like mission for the <laughs> Women's Center? What, what's your main goal? Uh, to provide awareness, education, and support for all students, um, specifically relating to gender identity, sexual orientation, um, and all of those issues that we mentioned in the beginning, LGBTQIA, body image, things like that. Right, and so what kind of services do you offer? I know it's not just for women, and that's mm -hmm. something I kind of want to clear up here. I think Absolutely. men are welcome, too, for certain services. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. So as a, as a center, um, first of all, we're a physical space, and so we have lounges that students can come and utilize um, with tables, and they can also reserve the lounges. And so we try to create a safe space and um, a dedicated space for students that mm -hmm. um, maybe belong to marginalized identity groups, but also all students on campus. Um, we also offer events, you know, we put on programming throughout the year, so that's another way that we serve the mission of the Women's Center. Um, so our events usually focus on those topics that we brought up mm -hmm. earlier. Uh, and then we also have support staff, so mm -hmm. we have a social worker mm -hmm. that um, can work with students that may be experiencing some sort of um, roadblock to being all that they can be, their academic success, and uh, so yeah, we do th three main things at the Women's Center. Great, and you touched mm -hmm. on the lounges. Uh, could you just tell a little bit more about that? I think that's really mm -hmm. awesome that you have that for students. Yeah, so we have a big, huge, reservable lounge. Um, lots of tables, it's a really nice space. Um, we really encourage students to utilize it to come study. Um, you can come in if it's not being reserved, but you can also come in and reserve it if you have a group that you wanna 
sit down and study with or if you're a campus organization. Um, and then we also have a dedicated LGBTQIA lounge, which is, again, welcome for, it's welcome to every student. Um, but we just try to emphasize that it's a safe space for LGBTQIA students to come and, and feel like they can be themselves in the center. Yeah. We also have computers and cable TVs, so people oh, don't wow. always know that, and DVD That's players, awesome. and uh, people can hook up their laptops and watch Netflix. We have a lot of things, and I wish people would use it a little bit more. I right. definitely see people watching their favorite TV shows during lunch <laughs> breaks. Um, one other thing is that we offer a lactation room for, any, for nursing parents or people oh, that cool. need to pump during the day. Um, it's pretty well utilized. It's pretty cool, and I've been told that we have the best one on campus. So. Oh, so <laughs> there's others on campus. Yeah, I didn't handful. know that. Uh, students can search them on the Boise State website to find a map. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. And so what kind of staff are you equipped with? I know you mentioned mm -hmm. a little bit earlier about counselors, but mm -hmm. what kind of different staff do you have? So um, our staff is composed of, we have pro staff that oversees the peer educators. Mm -hmm. And so our peer educators are the ones that um, do most of the programming and put on events and, and things like that. And they also help run the center, the day-to-day -day operations. But um, so in addition to our faculty, we have a social worker. Mm -hmm. um, so not necessarily a counselor, but a social worker that can work with students um, in times of crisis. And uh, yeah, did you have anything to add to that? Yeah, so our professional staff, um, we have a director position that will be searching for a new director soon. So it's really exciting that we'll be um, adding to our staff. The associate director, Adrian Bang, who's also the social worker that uh, Lana mentioned, also gives a lot of direction um, for budget and our content development. I supervise the students as program coordinator. We have a fantastic administrative assistant um, named Maria Tellez. Mm -hmm. um, and she really makes the world go around in the Women's Center by getting all of our budget stuff in line, all of our administrative tasks, and it, the Women's Center went run. And we have two interns that we hire through the student the Department of Student Affairs, mm -hmm. um, and then awesome peer educators like Lennon who produce film screenings, workshops, and tabling events. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So what would you suggest for a student who was interested in maybe mm -hmm. working at the Women's Center or doing an internship? So I would encourage them to apply when the positions <laughs> become available, first of all. Um, and second of all, just explore their interest in um, you know, the mission of the Women's Center, mm -hmm. what, what specifically might speak to them mm -hmm. and their experiences. Um, and the work that we do as peer educators is really powerful mm -hmm. <clears throat> and meaningful. So um, I think students that show interest in these ideas and these topics can really benefit from working at the Women's Center mm -hmm. as a peer educator or an intern. But, you know, get on Bronco jobs and apply. <laughs> Very good. So I was reading through your website and mm -hmm. it was talking about allies and mm -hmm. I found that really interesting. Could you mm -hmm. explain more about what an ally is and what they do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, at the center, when we talk about allyship or being an ally, um, we recognize that it's an active, it's deciding to take an active role in supporting mm -hmm. marginalized groups or marginalized identities. And so that could mean, um, you know, being able to support LGBTQ issues as a non-LGBTQ identified individual mm -hmm. or support women's issues as a non-identified um, or as a male or other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, identified gender, so. Yeah, I think allyship is really important and to really move it from a noun rather than just saying I'm an ally is mm -hmm. how am I an ally? How am I acting in allyship with groups that um, I don't share their marginalized identity? So I identify as a queer person, but I'm also white. So I think about what does my white privilege mean? And how, am I in, how do I act in allyship? What, a, what are people of color asking me to do? Where is my role in that? So we do work through those issues. I mean, I work through those issues from my personal level on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. I know Lana works through those issues. And so we encourage people to think about what are they doing in their everyday lives that shows mm -hmm. that they're working for social justice and acting in allyship. That's really great. That's mm -hmm. very encouraging um, mm -hmm. for those people. Um, so I know you have resources for mm -hmm. violence prevention, mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, kind of like guidebooks. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me more about those? Yes. Um, our violence prevention program, one of our largest uh, facets of that is the bringing in the bystander workshop. Mm -hmm. What that is, it's a 90 minute workshop that um, many UF 200 classes as well as campus groups have chosen to have us bring into them. Um, and it covers what the dynamics of sexual assault are. So we use sexual assault as a case study, recognizing that people can be bystanders in all types of situations. It's kind of like being an ally in a sense, right. is that you're looking for what you know and what you believe in and what you're standing up for. Uh, so it runs through the process of 
um, first the facts, and then how people can be a bystander. So it could be small or seemingly small mm -hmm. things, like when someone uses a rape joke to say, hey, what do you mean by that? Or that's not really cool. All the way to what do you do if a friend says they might have been sexually assaulted and what are the resources for them on campus? Mm -hmm. So it really walks people through um, their own knowledge and what they're able to do on their own so they can be better prepared to be an active bystander. Right, do you have anything to add to that, Landon? Uh, we, we have resources for students mm -hmm. that um, may have questions or want, want to find mm -hmm. out more about how to maybe intervene or how to, to go about being an active bystander mm -hmm. um, for violence prevention. And so if you, for folks that are interested, we have, uh, you know, doc, we have resources, mm -hmm. we have uh, pages full of um, issues about consent and topics that um, can guide students through tricky situations and stuff like that. But we also offer mm -hmm. those workshops that I think are really beneficial. Mm -hmm. That's really great. Yeah. Um, so speaking of you know violence, mm -hmm. uh, maybe security, do you work with any like departments on campus such as campus security or any other uh, departments? Yeah, so as far as violence prevention, mm -hmm. we definitely have um, connections with campus security. We suggest that as a resource for students as well as the Dean of Students Office if someone's interested in reporting. Um, but we have those resource sheets for everybody who's available. Right. Um, outside of violence prevention, we also work with a lot of other campus departments such as multicultural student services, um, health services, and others throughout the year to do programming. Okay, and what about you, Landon? Um, in my experience, I've worked with different departments. I've worked with health services in the mm -hmm. past, planning um, last year diversity week. I've mm -hmm. worked with um, MSS, the Multicultural Student mm -hmm. Services Department. Um, I don't work a whole lot with violence prevention since mm -hmm. my emphasis is in LGBTQIA and masculinity, mm -hmm. but it's definitely a main topic of the center. So. Awesome. So you mentioned diversity week, mm -hmm. and I know you had that last semester, mm -hmm. I believe. Could you tell me more about what that is and what went on? Mm -hmm. So Diversity Week um, happens every year in the fall. It's a joint event between the Women's Center and a campus organization called the Pride Alliance. Mm -hmm. And so Diversity Week serves to bring attention to um, LGBTQ-identified uh, people on campus and in the community. And it's really, um, it's a week that focuses on different identities and different topics within the community. and. And I think it allows the campus um, to better understand these identities and better um, understand the diversity that exists here in our community. So, mm -hmm. Do you have anything to add to that, Kate? <laughs> um, I have the privilege of also uh, not only working at the Women's Center, but also being the advisor to the Pride Alliance. Okay. Um, the students did a fantastic job of identifying issues that they wanted to talk about. So we had an LGBT 101 for anybody who wanted to get a basic understanding of what all these letters mean, what um, the acronyms stand for, and what does it mean to have um, what does our identity mean with sexual orientation and gender identity? Because everybody has one, and how do we talk about those pieces of our identity? Mm -hmm. um, all the way to a film screening um, about a person that lost their partner and what that legal process was like, um, um, whether or not it was supportive. Um, there was a comedian that visited. Um, the students did a great job, really, overall, of identifying topics they wanted to talk about, and it was really well attended. Yeah, <laughs> additionally, I wanted to add, uh, every year, um, I don't know if it's a tradition mm -hmm. now, but every year we try to have a panel mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. community leaders, mm -hmm. and so this last semester we had um, an, an ex-Idaho legislature um, or Congress congressperson mm -hmm. come, mm -hmm. and we had an attorney come and talk about different legal rights for LGBTQ identified folks here in Idaho. Mm -hmm. We had um, people of different identities talk about their experiences here in Idaho and in and, and, and different states, mm -hmm. you know, being married, what marriage equality meant, so that was kind of a topic that we talked about since that was something that was going on at the time. Mm -hmm. And so it, it really benefits um, folks coming every, every year to Diversity Week to see this panel of experts talk about the most recent mm -hmm. LGBTQ um, topics in the community and in Idaho. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. That's yeah. great mm -hmm. that you have those forums uh, mm -hmm. to open up discussion about those issues. Absolutely. Because a lot of people may not be aware or mm -hmm. have the right facts about them. Um, you mentioned working with like leg legislators in the community. Do you work with any other um, people in the community besides at the university? So for Diversity Week, in addition to um, receiving support from the Women's Center, mm -hmm. um, and I was the president of the Pride Alliance last <laughs> semester, so I, I worked a lot with Kate in planning these events and putting on um, the programming for the week. But we also worked with the ACLU of Idaho, okay. and so they helped organize the panel that I was speaking about earlier. 
Um, we work with uh, the Pride Foundation that's based out of Seattle, mm -hmm. and they really supported us in bringing um, the film screening and a speaker to talk about um, the issues of same-sex couples' rights and, and what that means going forward. So, yeah. Great. So you mentioned earlier mm -hmm. a class, like a 101 mm -hmm. class. Mm -hmm. Are there any classes on campus that students can take through the university um, that you would recommend to students? Oh. <laughs> I don't know a lot about the specific classes right. um, offered on campus to students. And like maybe this is a better question for Landon, but the some of the classes that I see students coming into the center and saying that they're really having this awesome critical thinking experience um, is mainly through the gender studies, sociology, um, and university uh, foundations classes. That's where I see a lot of students like, wow, this is really promoting critical thinking. Um, those are often the classes that I get to go to and mm -hmm. do presentations, so those are the ones I know about. But I've seen um, several uh, faculty members and departments supportive of our work. Awesome. And, and delving into these topics and taking classes in sociology and gender studies and UF, I think students really discover that they can see groups of people and, and identities through mm -hmm. a different lens and it really changes their perspective and has a big impact on how they go about their day and how they interact with other people. So yeah. I think it's mm -hmm. really beneficial. Right, I think mm -hmm. all students <laughs> should look into something like that mm -hmm. at some point here. Um, so I was looking on your website mm -hmm. as well and I saw something about the C survey. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me more about that? So the C survey stands for Student Experience Assessment. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of our interns all semester has been working on assessing the, the campus community on their knowledge about the Women's Center and their knowledge about issues of feminism and topics on um, healthy relations, well, healthy relationships. Healthy relationships, um, perceptions of LGBTQ people, um, what does feminism mean to them, just to get a, a good, um, overview of what students are thinking about the topics that we covered so we can best meet the needs of the students. Um, so we don't have a lot of data from it yet, it was just last semester, and it t turns out it takes a long time to pull together data and make some, make some sense of it, but we're hoping to be able to share that with the campus community soon on, by bringing programs that are really relevant to students and what students want. Yeah, that's awesome. You can uh, collect that data to kind of gear where you want to go next. Exactly. And um, so I also saw that there's a National Women's History mm -hmm. Project. Um, is that kind of recognizing women uh, for what they do? Can you tell me more about that? Um, I can. The Women's Center doesn't currently work with it. That mm -hmm. uh, the Women's National History Project is still going on. It's a national organization. Um, we don't work with it personally, but what I think is really important about it is that there's often times in history where women have not been recognized for their work, mm -hmm. um, that most history has been uh, written from a male perspective. So we want to make sure that people are being recognized, all marginalized identities in history. So while we're not working with that at the time, that's the purpose of the National Women's History Project. Awesome. And do you have any scholarships available to women or anyone really on campus? Um, while we don't offer student tuition scholarships through the Women's Center, we're always looking for scholarships that we can promote to students through our newsletter, our Facebook. Uh, we pr promote a ton of stuff on our Facebook um, that are relevant to our students. So um, scholarships for women and for LGBTQ students. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go so ahead. in addition yeah. to that, I, I know that um, we also one of our topics mm -hmm. is also women in STEM. And so mm -hmm. there are mm -hmm. a lot of scholarships Huge. available um, for folks in those groups. And there's also, as a... Um, ex Pride Alliance president, I know that we really focus on LGBTQ scholarships mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and providing that information for our members. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Could you just explain what STEM <laughs> is to some people that may not know? So STEM sound, stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. Uh, so traditionally, women have not been represented mm -hmm. in those areas of academia. And so there's a really important push to try to influence and encourage women to go into these higher paying careers and, mm -hmm. and really be leaders in those fields. Right, that's awesome. Um, you also mentioned the newsletter. Mm -hmm. you have, do you have a, like a weekly newsletter or monthly? It is bi-weekly, so okay. once every two weeks. We recognize that students are very often busy with very mm -hmm. full inboxes, mine is too, so I like to know when I'm getting items. Mm -hmm. But every two weeks we send out a newsletter with uh, scholarship announcements with our events going on. Mm -hmm. um, we have a game night going on tonight. That was in our last newsletter. Mm -hmm. um, and also supporting our campus partners. So often if Multicultural Student Services has a program, we'll promote that. Um, if Student Involvement and Leadership has a, an event going, we'll promote that. Um, just to really provide support and make sure students know about the opportunities that are available to them. 
I actually did look through a few of your <laughs> newsletters, and some of the events looked really fun, mm -hmm. awesome, and I didn't know about them. Um, so tell me about more about the event you have tonight. Um, one of our peer educators, Kara, is, has actually been working with Game Night. Um, we noticed that a lot of students were really looking for some social events and to mm -hmm. spend more time building community. So we are putting out all the game night, our uh, game boards, <laughs> board games, there we go, uh, ordering some nachos and hoping that people get to know each other. It's still close to the beginning of the semester for people to get to know each other, make some new friends and build those connections. Right. And so anyone is welcome to come to that? Everybody is welcome. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We really put a lot of energy and effort into thinking how to best um, serve the students and how to best... Um, you know, make these events well attended mm -hmm. and we want to create things that people want to go to and that mm -hmm. are fun and um, I think that game night is a great representation of that. Yeah, that's awesome. What kind of other events do you have going up, going on or do you have any other ones coming up that you know of? Personally, I can speak to an event that I'm working <laughs> on. Um, right now I'm working on collaborating with different campus organizations so that we can um, put together a film screening uh, for a, a film that is going to be released called The Mask You Live In. And so it really focuses on um, the experiences of boys um, and their feelings and behaviors and how they're um, shaped or gender policed and, and what those implications are on, for the, are on men, middle-aged men and the, um, the culture of masculinity in this country. And so it really, it looks at um, different topics and ideas and tries to understand from like more of a sociological point of view Mm -hmm. these ex the experiences of, of men that maybe feed into things like, like violence or addiction or suicide. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's a really powerful film and I think a lot of people will be able to benefit from seeing it mm -hmm. and maybe having a larger discussion about masculinity and maybe what healthy masculinity mm -hmm. can be in this country. And mm -hmm. when can we look forward to seeing that? Well, it's it's a little bit top secret -y right now. <laughs> um, we actually won't have the rights to the film to have it screened until March 1st. No campuses are allowed to screen until March 1st. Okay. Um, so we are trying to nail down a speaker to come with the film, someone featured in the film, and, um, an expert on the topic, which is going to be really cool. So look out for us in April, mid-April. Okay. Let's try that. <laughs> Very good. I'll keep posted on your website. Mm -hmm. Get the newsletter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, do you have any people that just volunteer? Is there a way for students to do that, you know, get yeah. involved? Just yesterday I had <laughs> some, an individual walk in with a volunteer application. So it's, mm -hmm. it's very easy to volunteer and get involved at the Women's Center. I would encourage anyone that's interested uh, to come in and all you have to do is fill out a form. We ask for a little bit of information maybe on what you're interested in or why you want to volunteer for the center. Mm -hmm. And then beyond that, we, we have a, an outreach coordinator that works mm -hmm. with our volunteers and matching them with different programs that they may be interested in helping with. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a great way to get involved in meaningful work here on campus. Okay. So they can uh, volunteer for a kind of a, a group that they're interested in. Yeah, so, so we ask what topics they're interested mm -hmm. in. Um, and kind of what they would like out of a volunteer experience. Some people are really interested in digging into those issues and maybe having those in-depth conversations, while some people want to help promote events where they really want to get into that marketing aspect. So it's really about what the individual volunteer wants, and we try to match them up with um, opportunities that really fit their needs. Awesome. Is there any way to donate or support the Women's Center? We're actually a campus department, so mm -hmm. uh, that's not something that we ask for for students. We're available to students um, as part of them being students and all of that, so we don't accept uh, donations. Okay, so nobody in the community? No, but I definitely suggest um, people who want to support mm -hmm. um, issues similar to ours or the issues that we talk mm -hmm. about in the community. There's the Women's and Children's Alliance, there's the Idaho Coalition um, Against Sexual Assault and Domestic Violence. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of great community organizations that if people have resources that they want to share, um, there are those community organizations. And I would also add, in addition to that, mm -hmm. when we are doing our programming or we're looking at mm -hmm. events or we're mm -hmm. trying to bring in a speaker, mm -hmm. we look for other departments or other organizations mm -hmm. that may be interested in supporting us with grants um, to help with, you know, just the cost of things. And, and mm -hmm. it also helps engage those groups and helps increase turnout and um, it helps our events reach more people. So, mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So we're kind of wrapping up here. Would you uh, like to add anything else today that I missed here? Well, I would just encourage, um, you know, we were talking about the volunteering. I would mm -hmm. encourage um, anyone who is interested in any of these topics to come into the Women's Center, get a tour, see what it's all about, use the lounges, get involved with events if mm -hmm. you can. Um, I know from my experiences it's been 
one of the most meaningful and, and per perspective changing things that I've done mm -hmm. throughout college. So I'm just really grateful that it's here and I know that a lot of students can benefit from getting involved. <laughs> And you do have an o kind of an open door policy, mm -hmm. so anyone's welcome to drop by any time at the front desk. Yeah, I love that you recognize that the Women's Center isn't just for women. <laughs> Regardless of the name, we serve all identities. Mm -hmm. um, we're a safe space for everybody. Our programs are open to everybody. Um, and the, the issues we talk about impact everybody. Everybody has a gender identity. Everybody has a gender. We know, uh, just like the film Lana was talking about, masculinity, um, is something we need to talk about because everybody grows up with these stereotypes and pressures and what is the media and culture telling us. Mm -hmm. So I think that everybody could benefit from attending a program at the Women's Center. That's awesome. I really want to thank you both for coming here today. I know mm -hmm. I learned a lot and I will mm -hmm. um, keep posted as well. Uh, could you just tell us about your newsletter or your Facebook mm -hmm. that people can subscribe to just to keep informed before we yeah, the best way to stay involved and updated on our events and programs is to join our Facebook group. It's pretty simple. You just like us mm -hmm. um, right under Boise State Women's Center. Um, there's also a Boise State Pride Alliance group, um, the group that Landon used to be in charge of. Um, and just by visiting our website and inputting your email address, you can sign up for our newsletter. Very good. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming. Thanks thank very you. much. <laughs> thank you for tuning in to UTP Presents. I'm Anna Silver, and have a good day.